what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Prehistoric Companions. I'm Dylan, this is Caviar, and today I want to go over 10 reasons why I keep reptiles. Reason number one, they're different. The vast majority of people, I'd say, around the world keep the furry uh, cats and dogs, and you know, everyone's got them, and I, I love all animals, don't get me wrong, but uh, there's not a whole lot of uh, reptile keepers. The, the community is growing. There's a lot more people today keeping reptiles, but um, still, from my experience living here in southern New Mexico, there's still just a lot of people that don't know a whole lot about it, and whenever I share my animals with people, they're just always amazed, so they're different. Reason number two, they are very interesting. I really enjoy just watching these creatures, especially when you set up their habitats properly give them the enrichment and the environment that they need and see how they interact with the creation that you have built them. It's very interesting just to see the ways that they behave. I enjoy seeing my snakes just slither all around their environments, all the different branches, and just watching them interact with all the features and the habitat that you designed for them is pretty cool. I keep quite a few different species now and I really enjoy learning about them and I really love all the different morph mutations, especially with these ball pythons. There's, there's no other animal in the world that has quite the color palette that these things do. Caviar here, he's an albino pied and he don't really want to hang out with me right now. He's trying to get away. Still working on expanding and growing my collection and as I get ready to make a transition to Las Cruces, New Mexico, looking at a larger piece of property, hope to amp up my collection, acquire species that I've been dreaming about for many years now. And again, because of all those different, very unique and special behaviors that all these amazing reptiles have. Reason number three. Their feeding responses are really cool. Number four, they're beautiful. Give you guys a little peek at my ARS 7010 hybrid rack here. I have around 10 ball pythons. Once I get resituated over in Las Cruces again, I hope to upgrade all of my snakes. Just use this rack for breeding purposes, but give everybody more space, more enrichment, all that jazz. This is Vegeta, he's a banana, pastel, GHI, het hypo, royal python. He's the first snake that I've ever acquired. I've had him for probably about seven or so years now. This is Cleo, she's just a citrus pastel royal python. She's a total sweetheart. Pretty big too, she's probably about four and a half, five feet long. This is Danger Noodle, he's just a normal pied male. He and Cleo had babies for me two years ago and I still have four. This is Charlie, just a normal female royal python. Normal ball pythons kind of have that dark brown kind of coloration, the alien head patterns that you see here, black kind of background color. Hula, who we've seen just momentarily, bamboo royal python, she's gorgeous. As you guys already seen, caviar, albino pied, stunning snake. Got magma, my red line. Translucent, hypomelanistic, leatherback bearded dragon. She recently just finished shedding, so she's looking amazing. This is Ash. She's a zero bearded dragon, leatherback, hypomelanistic, and I believe I want to say she's head translucent. I forget. I will have to find out when I breed her. This is Amber. She's a Dumeril's boa. She's huge. She's probably like seven and a half, eight feet long. She's a little spicy. I'm working with her still, but she's calmed down a lot since I first acquired her. Maybe about four-ish months now, five months maybe. She just ate a large rat last night, so she's basking and trying to digest that thing. I think reptiles are so beautiful. If you guys didn't know, I'm an artist for all of my new viewers. This is a bearded dragon charcoal drawing that I've been working on for probably about two years on and off now. Hopefully as summer approaches, I'm a middle school science teacher and hoping to get a little bit of time this summer to finally put the finishing details on this thing and get it nicely framed. But reptiles are so beautiful that I even go as far as drawing, uh, taking hours upon hours to draw them. Reason number five, <laughs> They don't stink, unless when they make poopies, then it stinks really bad. But for the most part, they don't smell like, you know that smell when you give your dog a bath? It's not that pleasant. 
Really, reptiles don't have any sort of odor, and I clean all of my habitats very thoroughly. Every month or month and a half, well, like an as-needed basis, I'll change everyone's bedding, fresh substrate, really clean houses, clean water all the time, spot cleaning regularly. When you do all of that, when I come into my reptile room, typically smells like a tropical rainforest. They don't make a whole lot of noise. I'm not crazy about like barking and all excessive noise. So when I come home, it's nice and quiet and it's peaceful. And when I let my animals slither around the house or let them run around with bearded dragons out, they don't really, they don't tear everything up. They don't destroy your couch. They don't claw up your furniture. I mean, these things I don't think could destroy anything even if they really wanted to. Reason number six why I keep reptiles is they're pretty low maintenance. Now I do kind of have a lot of animals, so uh, typically on feeding day and on the weekends, it takes me a whole entire day just to get everybody cleaned, um, fresh water, bedding if I need to change that stuff. Feeding takes a while, but I got a lot of animals. If you only have one bearded dragon or one ball python, one or two, it's very easy. My snakes only eat on a once a week, twice a week, or even some of them only once every three week basis, so that's pretty easy. They don't poop every day, so that's really great. It's very low maintenance, you don't gotta walk them, you don't gotta cater to them, so I like that. They're very independent animals, it's easy for me. Reason number seven is there's just so much to learn. I've been keeping reptiles, I think, probably just about my entire life when I was young. Um, in elementary school, I had some sulcata tortoises and I thought they were amazing. Whenever I moved out, went to college, my first pet all on my own, I got a bearded dragon. I've had an iguana. Iguanas are not great pets. I don't recommend getting an iguana unless you're retired and have all kinds of time to devote to them. They are mean, don't do it. But I've been keeping a lot of different kinds of animals for a long time and I'll tell you, I'll be honest, I'm still learning. Uh, there's that saying, if you do something for 10,000 hours, you're technically an expert and I've been doing this for, for definitely more than 10,000 hours and I'll tell you, I ain't no expert. I know a lot, but there, I, I feel like I've just scratched the surface with everything that I think I could know, especially with like genetics and breeding, which I aspire to do more of here in the near future. And it seems like in the reptile industry, we're always trying to improve our husbandry and the ways that we keep our animals, the best diets, the right enclosure setups. There's just so much to learn always. Reason number eight is I love designing enclosures. This is a 40 gallon Exoterra that I built out with some rock feet features, ledges, there's live plants, it's bioactive, it's got a water feature, the waterfall, there are some fake plants in there, a uh, misting system, uh, I built this probably about two years ago for my BCI boa, this is Linguini, and I'd say she's a happy girl living in this thing, always out on display, always cruising around, she's got a little cave in here that she seldomly uses, but um, she uses all the space in here and it looks beautiful. It functions properly for the animal, but it also looks great for me. My bearded dragon enclosures are also a work in progress. When, again, once summer hits, hopefully I'll get around to finishing this out. I did a whole lot of grouting in here, but uh, there's a little bit more, a couple more layers and other features I'd like to include and got to seal it. This is a 120 gallon enclosure from Custom Reptile Habitats and really for your bearded dragons you want about 120 gallons when they're adult size because they are pretty active animals. You need plenty of space for them to run around, to climb, to jump, to hide. They've got a cave system in here that they can access here and there's a loose substrate they can go digging in there. I got a little plant pot there so I could plant some live plants in there for them to munch on. Reason number nine why I love keeping reptiles and weird stuff. These are uh, Madagascar hissing roaches and Porcelia lavis, dairy cow isopods. I keep so, a lot of weird bugs too. But yeah, reason number nine why I like keeping reptiles and exotics is because I like teaching people about them. I love making videos and content for my YouTube channel. Been doing YouTube now for I think two and a half, three years and we hit a thousand subscribers. So thank you so much for everyone who has taken an interest in my channel and hitting that subscription button really does mean a whole lot to me and I can't wait till I get a little more situated in my life and I continue to bring more content, better content. I can't remember if I mentioned one of my previous videos, but I think in my next video I should do a giveaway. Since we hit a thousand subscribers, 
uh, stay tuned for the next video. So I'm thinking about doing a, a giveaway. I think for the giveaway, I'll do like some uh, custom reptile themed artwork. I make some weird snake, resin snake earrings, snakeskin bookmarkers, lamps that are reptile themed. So stay tuned for the next video. And then reason number 10 why I keep reptiles is because these guys are naturally fearful of a lot of things and it's really cool that you can work with an animal that's typically afraid of everything wants to bite and you build that trust that bond and they learn to trust you and to me that feels pretty special like they trust me they feel safe and comfortable with me um, they're not desperately always trying to get away um, they a lot of my animals will actually, as soon as I open their enclosure, they'll actively slither on you because they want to come and engage with you and come out, explore. So I think that's really special to take an animal that just is, too, like I said, supposed to be afraid of everything and they feel safe with you. That's pretty magical. We'll go ahead and end the video today here with my boy Vegeta. Thank you guys for stopping by. Again, stay tuned for my next video. We'll do a giveaway. My name's Dylan, you're watching Prehistoric Companions and learning about the 10 reasons why I keep reptiles. You guys have an amazing week. Stay safe out there, me and Vegeta will. See you in the next one.